I've been using the new MineLab Vanquish 540 for a few days now. This is probably my fifth or sixth time out with it. And it's actually quite good. I'm actually liking it. It's put together very well. It's nice and quiet. It runs very silently. You've got some good options. You have a 12 inch coil, a 10 inch coil, an eight inch coil. You have wireless headphones that I don't have and rechargeable batteries that I do have. And you also get the eight inch coil in what they call the Pro Pack. So if you're considering one, think about it really carefully. Do you really want extra coils? Do you want rechargeables? Do you want wireless headphones? Do you have them already? So in my case, I was going to go for the 440 with a 10 inch coil, but then I got a few extra bucks together. I decided to go for the 540, but in actual fact, I'm sorry now that I didn't go for the 540 Pro Pack because I could really use the wireless headphones with the Bluetooth and the eight inch coil because I'm going to be going to some places where the 12 inches is just too big. Where I am today, fantastic. Cloud field, no problem. The 12 inch just sails along. Absolutely brilliant. We'll have a quick look at the Vanquish 540 in operation. Now it's a nice, tidy, compact control box and the coil plug is a easy entry, but make sure this collar is tight. And the batteries, literally, there's a little catch here. And we have our four MineLab rechargeables and they're 2450 milliampers. The headphone cable point there, that is the 1 8 inch right underneath the box itself. Now I love the square shaft system and the the old cam locks. We've seen these before but in actual fact this is holding up pretty well. Now one of the most unusual things about this Vanquish coil is it wasn't supplied with the wing nut and in the field I found the coil was going forward and back slightly, ever so slightly and I was losing my my equilibrium. So I just improvised with an old GPX nut and bolt, wing nut and bolt, and now the, the coil bolt tightens up and there's no movement in the coil at all. So uh, yeah, but there are female, male to female threads here on this side, but it's not sufficient to hold the coil. The coil actually does move when you're swinging. That they really should change this to a nut and bolt system. I'm trying to find a good stubble row to work. It's difficult because a lot of it is plastic and the stalks are still pretty hard. I have it set up in Relic and I have the RX coil winding to the left, which is shown on the box. <coughs> Normally the coil windings come out of the right hand side. Twenty-four you could say. There it is. The first Copper coin, I think, today. Getting a lot of these, these signals here. Just that mid, 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 mid tone. Now, I don't know, is that ground noise or is it ferrous? What I'm really liking about this Vanquish 540 is it's a very stable machine, very quiet. It doesn't actually say anything until you hit a target. And when you hit a target, you know it. And the volume, is good. The modulation is the same for all kinds of targets. So there's no, you can't really say if it's shallow or if it's deep, no modulation really. Now the deepest I've gone was about maybe seven inches for a tiny, tiny, but looked like a stud. One of those little caps, one of those tiny things. It would, you'd fit three of them on your little fingernail. I've just had a signal, 2021. Weak pinpoint audio there. Let's see what the all metal says. Okay. I changed my mode back into custom from the relic mode. Okay, that's better. So it could be a repeat of the last one. Something very, very close to the surface. So we'll check with this guy. What do we have? I actually think 
we have we actually have what looks like looks like a plum weight. Now here's one good feature of the Vanquish that I really like. I'm getting a double. There's a double clatter there. And a ferris intonation. But just turn around. And you can hear a kind of a tone roll. Of a ferris rejection. Well, I'm back out today on another sunny day and we have the Vanquish 540. We're going to see what it's like in plough. Now this is very hard to walk in and for extra good measure we have some electrical poles going through here as well. So uh, let's see if there are any EMI, which I doubt. Now I've just restarted the, the Vanquish after that last clip. So what I'm going to do it's off, so I'm going to turn it on, but I'm going to face the electricity pole here to noise cancel. And I won't move the coil, because that is the source of EMI in this field. And if you can focus on that, your operation should be very smooth, but I'm not actually getting any EMI here today. So that's good, but in the off chance that you do get interference, you could try that trick. It might work, it might not. Solid 16. And what I like about these, these signals, another screamer, it just gives me one tone, completely unlike the Equinox, they used to give me two, and I never really knew where it was. I think it's my first bit of scrap today. Yep, actually we'll leave it at f we'll leave it at full and see what happens. So it's starting to whimper or chatter a bit. So we'll just reduce it to eight there. Another bit of chatter. But the idea is to get it to be as quiet as you can without all these extraneous signals. That's a 30. I'm suspecting that's trash. But we'll have to have a look. So it's in this one. Big surprise now. Oh, big surprise indeed. From what I thought was the junk signal is a button, I'd say. It's a button. No, it's a washer. It's a plain old washer. I can't get over how quiet this field is. And the machine is quiet as well. I actually think the 12 is best here. That leads me to believe it's a bigger than normal object because the pinpoint was kind of broad. Look at that. It's a big old copper coin. Hip hip hooray. 19. Wow, you do get excited. Pinpointed to here. Now what we learned yesterday about uh, 19s were they were possibly lead. And there we are. So it's just like I said, lead. 1920. All right, good enough. We're learning the numbers. Another one here now. 1617. Now one thing about the garret I don't really care for is it seems to register the whole length of the barrel rather than the tip, which is what I would prefer. But I'm after pinpointing badly and it's here. Now it could be a small button because that's what small buttons came in at last, last time. No, 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 no. It's a lead ball, tiny lead ball. Lead ball. That is really small. Nice clear to find. That 
that was a kind of a low number. So this one is high. Could be silver. No, it ain't. It's another copper coin. Or is it? We won't know until we purge the mud from the side here. Yes, it is. Yes, folks. We have a second copper coin. Now, this looks like it could be George and maybe from the 1800s. This is in good condition, actually. Nice low conductive tone there now. Getting closer to it there, a double blip. So let's have a look. And we have a straight piece of something. No wonder it was a, a kind of a low, low readout. I don't know what that is. I've wanted a detector like this for uh, quite a while and ever since this was announced last year I really wanted to have it and now that I have I'm happy to use it. The only thing is the 12 inch that comes with it it's a bit nose heavy for me it's a bit unbalanced. I've had to shorten the the lower rod and I've had to jut this little armrest thing out a couple of inches and I'm still coming to grips with trying to find the right balance. I've been using it for the last few days. I'm liking what I've, what I've seen and it's quite easy to use. As always, thanks for watching.